have any questions, we're going to talk about assessing practice. Okay, setting practice. So let's just recap the main the main way in which you will either succeed or fail to communicate your practice tasks to the parent effectively is by either doing or not doing what? Demonstrate on gender lesson. Good. Not going through what it is you want me to do at the end. Good. Which Doing requires you recap, to yeah. be clear. Yes. Maybe what did you say? Doing her recap at the end of the Good. End of saying what the main teaching points are. Excellent. Yeah. All of these things require you to do what, when? Communicate. Uh, a specific action. Tell them to pick up their pen and take the notes. Um, most of them will do that. With the child. About five minutes at the end of that. Yes! One million gold stars to Caroline. Do your bow before the end of the lesson. If your lesson finishes at half past and you do the bow at half past, you will not have enough time to talk to the parent about what they're doing at home. Occasionally, you may be completely confident that they understand what they're supposed to do. For example, if you've been halfway through a piece, they've got a little bit further on, but basically the practice is the same as last week. Do the bow at 29 minutes past the hour and just check. Are you clear on what to do? Just repeat the same practice from last week. But most of the time, you want to leave how much time do we think? Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, at least three. And it is a real skill to be able to manage your time effectively during the lesson to A, get in everything that you want to get in, and B, have the self-discipline and the discipline with the parent, because they will say to you, oh, can she just play you blah? No, nope, sorry, tell me at the beginning of next week, and then, of course, I would love to listen to it. Because, you know, at, at the only time which I break this rule for myself is when we do the bow and then they say, oh, by the way, while he's playing an assembly on Wednesday, what do you think she should play? And I think, okay, that's more important than me setting practice effectively this week, because if I don't talk to her about what she's going to play and she tries to play her top piece, working piece, it might well fall apart and that's disastrous for her self-confidence and her standing in the eyes of her peers, etc., etc. But most other times... You know, she's been working really hard on her sight reading. Can we just do it quickly? I'll make a note and do it. Bless you. I'll make a note and we'll do it first time next first thing next week after the warm up. But you have to practice ways to basically say no. <laughs> Be assertive. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? It is, it can be. And with some parents, it's so hard that even when you're been been doing doing it for a really long time like me you will find it really hard and sometimes you just think i just don't have it in me yeah of course fine do it i don't care you know different days different to to, what to say i don't to fight you know if you've got a parent who who does that thing like oh we really just want to show you blah 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 and you're trying to say i'd love to hear it next week oh well i just want to ask you about bar three like you know, some days you just think, yeah, okay, fine. Like, if you think you know so yeah. much better than me, you'll find me this hard on it. I just don't have the energy. I can, you know, over the years, it won't matter whether I've succumbed at this moment or not. But generally, you want to set up a situation where, you know, that's not happening. Because if you do it every week over the years, then you will have unsuccessful progress. So, we finish the lesson early, we do the bow, the child can also put their violin away, put their shoes back on, it's a very useful little few minutes at the end, and I do recommend that you say to the parents, when you first start teaching them, this is how it will go, you hang in for half an hour, and the last 10% of that half an hour is talking about practice. I'm not finishing early when we do the bow at 26 or 27 minutes past. I'm making space for you and I to communicate in an adult way about what you're supposed to be doing at home, because really, my most effective role is in helping you practice with your child because you're going to do that for maybe three hours a week and we're here for 30 minutes so i can teach the most brilliant lessons and if you're not practicing well it will not work as well as if i'm teaching mediocre lessons but you're practicing really brilliantly you don't have to say all of that but do expect you know do set them up to expect that the lesson is not 30 minutes just like you pay for an hour of counseling and your counselor finishes the session at 50 minutes past it's exactly the same thing. Well, actually, it's not exactly the same thing. The counsellors go away and tend to and you don't get their last 10 minutes. But it is so that they can write their notes so that next time you see them, they know where you are at and they don't need to remember and be reminded all of those things. 
if no, it's like a bit like having a gym class or something, you will be leaving at five two, so that the next class starts now. Yeah, change over, yeah. Because sometimes you run late. Yeah, sometimes you do run late, yeah. but it's very good if you can get into the habit of not. Okay, so how does the practice, the two practice conversations that are going to sandwich your lesson, Bex, what are we doing at the beginning of the lesson? At the beginning, you're always asking how the practice sessions have gone. Excellent. Um, Can we so just do a role play? I'll just be the parent for your students. So how, how has practice been this week? How much have you been able to do? Yeah, it's been good. We've done quite a lot. Has that every day, for sort of five minutes, ten minutes, can you be more specific? Great, well done, yeah, exactly. So just dig in and just don't feel embarrassed. It's very easy to feel embarrassed. It's very easy to feel that you're like being really nosy. But, you know, you can say, I'm glad it went really well. Like, so how many days shall I write? And for, for people using a practice chart, I think, not a practice chart, a, a lesson record, it's really useful. Like, you've got a, you've got a, a form, form to fill in. <laughs> Who adults understand this? Like, what number am I putting in this box? Can just be really easy. Like, oh, yeah, you're putting a four. Okay, well, let's try for a five next week. Yeah? Or if you're always getting fives or you're always getting sixes, sevens, Okay, brilliant. How long is your practice lasting? Just every few weeks, not every single time. You don't need all the information. But what are the different pieces of information? I'm going to use the whiteboard because I love the whiteboard. What are the pieces, don't worry, what are the pieces of information that we want to gather every few weeks so we have a good, clear idea? It won't actually pick it up because it's just too far away. So, sorry, Fred, I just have to um, listen carefully. So what are the things that we want to know about the practice in terms of like stats? How food is he? Good. Length. Length. I would ask well, when do you do it? In the morning or in the evening? When do you do it? And is it regular? At that time do you have a proper, you know, designated practice slot. What are you practicing? Yeah, they can do the controls. Good. This pen is rubbish. I feel like I spend my life buying whiteboard pens. Mm -hmm. Just use a sharpie. Because people are all done. Do ah I've got one you can buy if you want. Thank you. I mean there are there is a big box of them on the um, do you get through? Everything. Could you put that in a bin? Thank you. Do you get through everything I've asked you to? Oh, that's a lovely pen, Amy. <laughs> good. We're building up a very good picture. Do we need listening habits? Yes, yeah, so we're going to do that separately. Right. How did it go? Did, was it easy or did, was there any question? Can you just dig down into a more when you say concise, concise, concise that's the word version of that? When you say easy, do you mean easy in that you find the work easy or easy in that it was easy to get going with the practice? No, um, easy with the work. All right. So, so what you're actually saying is, do you... Did you understand the task? That you yes. Did, yeah. Do you understand what you're supposed to do? Do you understand how to write on a board? Mm -hmm. Do you understand what you're supposed to do? Is this a comprehensive picture? So let's recap. Practice that. How often are you practicing? How many per week? How long are they lasting? When it ha when does it happen? Is it always the same? And be careful with that. Is it always the same for each day of the week? Like, do you have a set practice routine? Not are you practicing at the same time every day? Unless people practice in the morning, it's unlikely they're practicing exactly the same time every day because most people have something after school most days. So it would be four o'clock one day, five o'clock the next day, you know, three quarters five the day after, and six o'clock the next day. But the point is, have you planned when you're going to practice? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Do you? I think that's the best way to start these sentences. Do you have a plan? Good. 
What else do we want to know? Do you get through everything I've said? Yeah. How does this relate to the length of practice? There, you always set aside more time than you actually need to complete the task because the kids are not going to get. Half an hour was practice done in half an hour. They'll probably do about 10, 20, 15 minutes in that half. Absolutely. In terms of if you're setting 15 minutes, if it took you, if you, if it would take you 15 minutes to do that practice, if you just like literally did it, then it will probably take most children 30 to 40 minutes. But you need to know how effective, how efficient they are. If you're if you're getting through everything I've set in 25 minutes. That could still mean it's taking 10 minutes of playing and 15 minutes of faffing about, or that could mean it's actually taking 25 minutes and there are a lot of mistakes happening before you get to the correct ones. And if it's the latter, what does that tell you about the practice you're setting? It's too hard. It's too hard. So you want most of the practice tasks that you set to be something the child can already do or something that is so simple they will not mess it up. Well, I guess that's the same thing, right? So either it's a piece they can already play, or it's a preview that is so broken down that you've done it with them, they understand what to do, you've watched the parent do it with them, and you are completely confident that most of the tries they do, they're going to get right. Would it be fair to say that you also still need to be slightly challenging so they actually feel the benefit from doing it, rather than dismissing it as being too easy? For preview boxes, not necessarily. Overall, through the practice, definitely. But if you think about what you're trying to do is get the review. <laughs> right. Next week, if anyone leaves their phone on, there's a £10 fine and it's going to buy me a really nice bottle of wine. In fact, it probably won't buy me a really nice bottle of wine because it costs more than that. £25 fine. I <laughs> <laughs> um, should sit there texting people from that. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 most, so you say the practice task that you said must be something that they find easy. They, it must be something they are likely to get right when they're trying. Right. Not find easy, but that they know that they can do it. So that's yeah. why so for Lily Garot, really, like we were just talking about, that's yeah. why for Lily Garot we're doing busy, busy, stop, stop, with a big stop in between. The first time they do it, stretch, slide, lift, best friends, pull back. That's why you're telling them all of that. It's because so, if you just ask them to play it, then they're going to make loads of mistakes and you've got to reverse and go backwards. Yeah, so you, you show them exactly what to do, go through it, so they are, so you're confident they understand the task. Yeah. And then they have to go away and do it. It doesn't mean they can do it now, but that's what they have to practice. It means they can do it now. Yes. They can't really, do the final product now, but what yeah. you're setting is something they can already do so they can get better at it. They've had a go at it and they've done it with supervision. Yeah. yeah. For the preview, yeah. yeah. And, and then sure review, the obviously, you make review harder by saying, can you make it more beautiful? Can you make it more in tune? Can you make it more musical? Can you land your retakes better? Can you pick one of these things every time you play a piece? If you're talking about book one practice, right, go and tell already, how shall we play it today? What shall we think about? Shall we think about having a beautiful waterfall? Shall we think about standing tall? Shall we think about playing it beautifully in tune? And this is where the one point lesson thing, teaching to the priority comes in, that you're training the parents to make sure that they're picking something to think about. And for review, it's really important that they get to that quite quickly because otherwise they will think review is about not forgetting the pieces. Mm -hmm. Whoever's phone that is, please keep turn on. Thank you. Um, okay, so do you understand what you're supposed to do? And, well, what is this last question? What is what, what are we talking about now? What are we trying to assess? That the practice tasks are doable for them. Yeah. Like, uh, are you able to do most of what you're... How can we <laughs> phrase this? So concisely make practice tasks are things they can do on the supervision. Yeah. Are you able to do the tasks fairly easily? Good. One last thing, crucial. So far, if I look at this list, I have two extremely different options in my head. One type of practice. I know how long it's lasting, I know how quickly they're getting through the stuff, I know how hard they're finding it, what will that all play into, but may, may not be anything to do with how hard. It might even be something completely unrelated. What do we not know? This is a parent and a child, let's say a seven-year-old. 
How many times have you done it? No, we do know that that's frequency. Motivation is a very good one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Just no keep dog. digging. Are um, they enjoying it? What do you need to know as a teacher? How is their happiness? Yeah, exactly. Happiness. How is it? How, how is it between you when you're practicing? You know, like, are you shouting and screaming? And at the end of the half an hour, you're pouring yourself the largest GNT you've ever had. And your child's going off to, you know, have a massive sulk and not talk to you till bedtime. Or have you had quite a nice time? Yeah. How is how is your how are your interactions during practice? How is your relationship during practice? How is the vibe? Are there tantrums and breakdowns? Yeah, exactly. Mm. And you know that changes day to day, changes week to week. But I think one of the reasons I really care passionately about this, and I do think that it's often, thank you so much, not um, talked about enough in Suzuki, even though it's obviously so important for how we teach, is that I did um, parent feedback, which is another thing I think I'm the only person who actually does written feedback for their parents and for uh, a lot, I, I do written feedback for almost every event that I do. Um, and it's really important because I did parent feedback when I've been teaching. Does, does I, that mean that you, the parents actually give you feedback on? Yeah, I have a form. Do they actually do it then? Yeah, I have a form similar to the one that you guys did for the teacher training. What do you find easiest about practice? What do you find hardest about practice? What do you enjoy most about learning the violin? What do you think about my lessons? Do you understand what I set for you? Da, 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 da. All of these things. And so I, I guess Limamu was about nine playing book four, impeccably behaved in every practice, absolutely gorgeous child. Mum sat there, took, took notes, smiling, delightful, like the most perfect, delightful family you could possibly imagine. And her form said, violin is the hardest thing I have to do with my child ever. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, what? And I called her up as soon as I got them, because I just collected them at group lesson. Oh, have a look at these, we'll talk about it next week. <laughs> okay, what is this? What's going on? And she's like, he's screaming at me, I'm screaming at him, we're both in tears, it's just horrendous. And I was like, how long has this been going on? And she's like, it's always been like that. Oh, God, I felt like the worst teacher in the world. And I, you know, I taught him through to like size three, Vivaldi A minor. I had no idea. Yeah, because they're too embarrassed to admit it. Absolutely. And because you get the, you know, you get, mostly we get the children behaving like little angels and then their little shits at home. That's the way as a parent, most people want it to be that way. You don't want to, you know, you don't want your child to be as rude as they can be to you, to their teacher. But you also, if you don't know that that's what's happening, you are just like, it's amazing that they didn't quit. I mean, genuinely, I just think like, wow, all power to you, Kay. But also, why didn't you say, is there a way that we can make this nicer? What link do you use for the form? What sort of stuff is that? Is well, that just was a paper form. That, I mean, this was in like 20, yeah. 2005. Yeah, well, uh, job, um, job form or MailChimp? Ma uh, what's yeah, it called? Survey, 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 survey Monkey, thank survey, you. Survey Monkey, yeah. survey Monkey is really easy. It's completely anonymous, obviously, much easier to be anonymous online than it was when it was handwriting. <laughs> um, but I do think that this is a really, you know, I don't know this about my students week to week, but this is the list that I have in my head and that I can tell you which of my families struggle with number four, which of my families struggle with number one. And I think that is that is what you want is to just have a general impression that is fairly accurate about what's happening at home most of the time. And you know you can find this stuff out in one or two sentences a week. I so don't have to ask the same question. Don't interview them. Yeah. A couple of questions. But you know, like I said to Noel's mum, like, how, you know, is it all right when you're practicing together? Did, any raised voices having any tantrums? And she's like, no, it's lovely. So great, okay, tick, done. And the next week, am I setting too much? Am I not setting enough? I'm getting through it in five minutes. No, it seems okay. Or well, yeah, actually our practice has been three minutes this week. <laughs> sometimes that happens, not very often, more, more often the other way around, but sometimes. So I think, um, and I also think parent-teacher chats, which for Suzuki Hub teachers we have coming up fairly soon. Um, is a really helpful 
thing to incorporate into your teaching thus um, for us we've experimented with lots of different ways to do it and come to the point where we just do private lessons as usual but for one week a year and some people have said to me we should do it one week a term but I'm not sure about that um, they have the first 15 minutes ish talking to the parent and the child stays out it can be obviously much more difficult if you're teaching in your house or in their house or something like that but here um, they come without the child and, and even the parents who come in and say everything's fine I don't really know why we need to do this I just have a list of questions which I will send you um, to ask them which is basically this kind of checklist of like you know yeah so uh, and you're probably going to talk about this um, in a minute but so what do you do when when uh, you have a, a parent this is this absolute nightmare it's it's the, one of the most difficult things to get to work together there what, how do you okay so just before we yeah. do do a, yeah. do address that um Ed, you're completely right. The thing we haven't talked about is the listening. And so what are the questions? I'm just going to go and get one of my own pens so that there is also one in the room. Okay, I've got one kid, and she's better now, but when I took her in here, she, she transferred from another teacher. She was horrendous to her mother, and she was horrendous to me too. And I was thinking, well, at least she's consistent. <laughs> I'm imagine who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so listening. What are the questions we need to know? How old are you? See what you get. <laughs> yes. Get what you see with this girl. <laughs> okay, thank you, people. <laughs> what are you listening to? Is it in the background or foreground? Good. How are you listening? I mean, I think it's also quite interesting to know, are you listening on your mobile phone? <laughs> you know, is it coming out of a tiddly little speaker? Or are you listening through a sound system? But most, mostly what that question means is, are you listening to the whole of a book? Are you listening to halfway through a book to halfway through the next book? Are you listening to two books? Blah blah blah. Are you doing something while you're listening to it? Are you singing along with it? Good. Singing along is very helpful. Why? Internalization. Yeah, exactly. They can sing along with it. The next step is being able to sing it without the recording. If they can't sing along, they definitely can't sing without it. Um, and I think the other thing that I've run out of space, is it part of your practice? If you're adding half an hour of listening to a half an hour practice, that really maximises the chance that that's not going to happen. If, they're, if the parent's thinking of it as one block of activity, as soon as they don't have that hour, it's quite likely that they're not going to do anything. So I urge you to, to get them to separate listening and practice. Do one at one point in the day and one at the other point of the day. Best times for listening, I think, are during breakfast uh, or bath time for the little ones. Um, what about in car? Yeah, randomised. I mean, in London, most people aren't in cars very often and not for half an hour well maybe in london that's a, too much of a generalization most of the people i know have yeah. their cars for occasional use or short trips that are not okay. um but you know if you have a half an hour if you if it takes you half an hour to get to school and you drive every day great like i mean not great for the environment but <laughs> wait for the listening um, so separate your listening and your practice And then the intersection of these two is occasionally you should set listening carefully to something as part of practice. Like right? before you play your new piece, can you sit, read the music and listen to the piece just once through? That's not what I would consider part of listening. That's a practice um, That's activity. But I think it's really useful for us to remember that that is a really useful thing to do. Okay, so... Do you have to go, love? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I hope your back gets 
same with you. So the BSMA thing, please. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. just yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so, what is the likely reason for a child and a parent having horrible practice time? What's the most likely reason? Or what are some of the most likely reasons? Child's not ready to practice. Child's not ready to practice yeah. because yeah, keep going. Just coming from school or they're exactly. hungry or they're in the toilet or. Inappropriate timing. Yeah. It's seven o'clock at night, mum's just realised that she hasn't done the practice and she thinks that this is exactly the right time to do it with a four and a half year old. <laughs> just after bedtime, after, you know, after bath time, just, oh, just before you go into bed, let's just quickly do your practice. Like, no, don't, just leave it until the next day. So inappropriate time, your child's hungry, you haven't given them enough warning. Warnings are really helpful, right? In 10 minutes time, we're gonna do your practice. In five minutes time, we're gonna do your practice. I'm setting a time for one minute. As soon as you hear this timer go off, get your run and I'll give you a start before you've done anything except even like just pick up your bye. Bye, love. Bye. Oh, I can't get my bye in yeah, Okay. okay. I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying to. Try to... already doing something they love. Yeah, you're taking them out of something that they're really involved in. Sometimes that can't be helped, but it will, you know increase the likelihood of it not working well. Kit, can you think of something that is likely to make practice unsuccessful? Um, enjoying practice recently and when have you not been enjoying it recently? I guess like when I'm tired. Yeah, very good. Practicing when you're tired, but also in terms of content, practicing something that you feel confident about is pleasurable, isn't it? Practicing something that you feel you're shit at is horrible, right? So you need to keep the just realised I'm being recorded. Sorry, bro. It's not going on the internet. But um, you need to keep the you need to keep in mind the ratio of pleasurable activities to difficulty. And you know when you're talking about a pre twinkler, you basically need to make most of what they're doing feel really easy and fun because they're not getting any musical satisfaction because the musical part of what they're doing is almost nothing. They don't feel confident at anything yet because they're still just it's difficult to remember what plane position feet and rest position feet are. And so everything's got to be like super fun, you know, children's TV kind of approach. But by the time you're doing maybe, you know, minuet, you could probably do four reviews thinking about beautiful bow holds so that you can find the best sound because they recognise what a really good sound is. And if they get to the end of that piece, Song of the Wind, for example, and like, yeah, I did that really well. That is its own intrinsic reward. So you move gradually from extrinsic rewards to intrinsic rewards. And I think that entire process takes about 10 years if you're really lucky and often takes 15 years. Like, and sometimes it never happens. Sometimes our students never get to the stage where they want to practice, but they will practice because they want to play in that concert or they will practice because they want to get into that orchestra to go on tour with their friends. And so wanting to, you know, practicing for the sake of practicing, I mean, I don't know about the other people in the room, but it's very rare for me to actually practice for the sake of practicing. I practice because I've got a gig that I want to re prepare for. I practice because I want to learn a piece. I don't just practice to become a better player in this kind of nebulous, like whatever that means. You know, that, that that's not how I roll. Um, so I think you have, to find, you know, the vibe between the parent and the child is crucial and a lot of the time what is damaging that if they're always having awful practices is that either they just haven't learned how to relate to each other yet properly at all in any circumstance or the parent is trying to fit it in in a stressed out way when then it's not, it's not right for them, you know, if they've do you think that, um, I mean, something that I'm very aware of with, with when, when it's really early stages of I'm just going to come back to you, let me just finish that list. Sorry. So, don't worry. Um, so, either they can't really interact well on a task together, 
or the parent is not prepared, not like emotionally prepared, not physically prepared, has is hasn't prepared enough time, um, or the or I think the most obvious and often the most uh, the the one that happens for us the most is we're setting too many difficult things. The tasks that they've been assigned are too difficult, so they are feeling insecure. So then they just refuse, and that's when it becomes a battleground. And so that's what I was saying before that you want this balance between what is a feel good bit of practice, like you know, for book one to book three, maybe I would say that seventy percent ish of their practice should be review, and then you've got it depends how much time they're practicing, but you know, ten minutes on. 10% uh, on sight reading. So if you're thinking about a book three student who's practicing for half an hour, I don't mean actually playing every single moment, I mean the, the broad spread of that half an hour. Roughly 20 minutes on warm up, review, polishing a solo piece, three minutes on a piece of sight reading, and seven minutes doing, maybe five minutes doing some boxes and two minutes trying a playthrough of the first page of their new piece. And that means that they have refined the musical skills that they have in their in their um, reviews, they are actually taking those pieces and raising the quality and standard that they're playing them at up. And then when they get to the working piece, either last or not necessarily last, I just said that as a, as a timing thing. But you know, when they're working on the piece, they know, right, this is the bit that's gonna be really difficult and boring for five minutes. And if I do those boxes every day this week for five minutes, next week, Kate's going to be really pleased with my lesson, I'm going to be able to do it, it's going to be, you know, it all works out. But it's like hard for them to do that five minutes of really hard work, but part of the reason it works is because, and then I can practice the new piece that we're doing in group, which is really easy and fun. Or then I can practice my solo piece or whatever. So it's got to be the, the ratio of what you set has got to work. And I think that is the, the other reason that I am keen for them to get on with doing boxes right from really early on, at least five repetitions, and trying to get them to used to be doing a repetition of 10 quite quickly, is that once they get to that point where they're just like banging out the boxes, which sometimes is the end of book one, sometimes is the end of book two, like not necessarily quickly, but if they once they've accepted that boxes are just what you do at a certain point in your practice, then you can make sure that they can make really rapid progress through those difficult bits. Whereas if you basically let them not practice until they really need to, at whatever point that is, probably book two, or gosh, like what maybe, if they really start to need to practice that then, it's like, oh my God, suddenly I've got four boxes to do. Can you believe it? I've only ever had one box every six weeks to do before, and now she's expecting me to do four boxes every single day. That's not gonna fly. So you have to kind of, it's that front loading thing again, like you're teaching them how to practice. You teach them how to practice, regardless of whether they really need to or not. And then when they really do need it, they've got the skill and they're not learning how to do it as well as what to do. They're just learning the what to do bit. Um, Mimi, I'm really sorry, but I think no one of my book will be outside. So yeah. chat briefly about whatever you were going to ask. And I, uh, I was going to say that I think sometimes um, when you've got a, a, a really new young kid, um, and the, 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 uh, the whole thing is new to the parent and it's just when you say uh, I, I, the, parent, the child feels confident confident when the teacher handles them you know with a bow hole making a bow hole and all that. but when the parent has to do it because the parent doesn't feel confident and they, you know, they, they're a bit nervous a bit like a, a horse with an inexperienced rider the, the, the kid reacts badly and they, they, they say, oh, I can do it, I can do it, that kind yeah. of thing. And I think so, so it's really important to make sure that the parent feels a bit more confident about how to actually handle the child, you know, when, when, when they're trying to keep the bow straight and the wrist, wrist down. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Um, yeah. I think you yeah. Making sure the parent goes through it in the lesson yeah. probably helps with that because yeah. you're, you're saving, and then you correct the child. I correct the child as well. If I see that, that they're, they're doing it together, yeah. Yeah. and I pick up on something, and I always say, you know, when mummy or daddy's doing this with you, yeah. that they're meeting me, so you've got to make sure that you, you speak together. nicely to each other, yeah, but also you're a team. Yeah. You're a team.
they can see what you can't see. You can't see everything, but also they can't see what you can see, so you have to work together. But I've had people, you know, sometimes you watch them, and it's, you know, it's yeah. easy to get that. Like, uh -uh. You wouldn't do that to me. Someone just stop them. the computer report. Oh, no, you can't. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.